What's up, my channel? It's your friendly neighborhood sensible and right here coming at you with a writing video. I know, I know, it's been a while since I've been in this location. I'm sure you missed it. I know I did. The Alice is being very dramatic, so I'll get it together. So today I am telling you guys all about how. So I planned out a story, a Jane Austen based story, using my plant. Yes, I did that. Now you're probably wondering why did I do that, which is a completely valid question, and so I will tell you. I've been planning on writing a Jane Austen inspired short story um, with my clients for a while. It all started because of an episode of my podcast that I did. The podcast is Austin and the A Train. You can check it out. Um, I have a link to it down below. And the episode specifically that I'm talking about is one where we interviewed, um, they made this cute little RPG um, that's all about, like basically takes a lot of different Jane Austen y types of tropes and um, turns it into an RPG. And so I got this idea because I was also seeing a lot of videos of um, people like reading poetry with their dogs. And I know um, Savvy Writes Books has a video where she writes a self-help book with her dog Chewy. And so I don't have any pets, but I do have an, a truly ridiculous amount of plants. And so I decided it would be funny to write a story with my plants. Here we are. So what kind of prompted me to actually write this story is I signed up, I forget how I signed up. I feel like I just did it in a moment where I was just like, I'm a writer, like kind of moment. And I signed up to um, do this writing competition for the Jane Austen Literacy Foundation, which I'll also link to down below. They have a contest every year and it's a free contest, which is always nice. We love that, we love free things. Um, and I think the, the story that wins gets is chosen to be put in um, is chosen to be put in their audiobook, I believe is what the prize is. I can't remember off the top of my head. I'll correct it in the link down below or I'll just correct it in post editing. Um, so yeah, so um, getting a reminder that I signed up for the Jane Austen Literacy Foundation and the topic was Jane Austen inspired story. And I thought, welp. Now I have a deadline and so I got to work and so that that's what really inspired me to actually finally write this short story if it doesn't win, if it does win obviously I'm gonna do a whole video about that because that's gonna be a huge deal but if it doesn't win I'll probably put it on patreon for my podcast because I really had a lot of fun writing this it was a lot of fun just like figuring it out with my plants, um, learning the mechanics of the RPG game, and you can learn all about that in the video. And you can learn all about that in the episode that I did when we interviewed these women. The RPG that I specifically used is called The Good Society. The company that makes it is called Storybird Role Playing Games. Uh, they have a lot of really interesting games out there, and they also have a lot of really interesting add-ons to The Good Society. Not to be confused with The Great Society, that was a whole other historical thing. But, but you can also figure, you can also find it really easily if you type in Jane Austen RPG into Google, and then boom, it shows up. So it was really cool to be able to break down the process for writing a story, writing a short story, and also working with my plants. So um, I hope you enjoy this video. If you want to see more content like this, where I do like a let's write video and you kind of watch me go through the whole writing process, please let me know and I would be happy to write some more. You can like this video, leave a comment down below on what you like. Um, and yeah, so if you enjoy this type of content, please uh, give this video a like so I know to do more let's write types of videos. All right, so. So first things first, uh, we started off with characters. So I used my pineapple plant, which I named Luigi, because when I was playing through Luigi's Mansion, um, which was like my, my mental health game, like, I don't know why Luigi's Mansion just kind of called to me when I was having a rough time. And so I played a lot of Luigi's Mansion, or no, Luigi Mansion 3, the one in the hotel. And anyway, so this plant, the pineapple plant, was all over the place that game. And so I fanned out the cards, um, the four character and the four characters that were leaning closest to the pine where the pineapple would point. So I like kind of propped up the pineapple because it was leaning one way because of the lighting and everything. Whichever way the pineapple leans, I'm gonna take those four. And everything is placed face down, so I have no idea what character is gonna be chosen. Oh no! Well, Luigi has spoken. We get hard to see Luigi. Here are the four characters we have. The socialite, the dependent, the new arrival, 
And last but certainly not least, the careerist. Now, I don't have to make all of these men, and I probably won't, because that's not what Jane Austen would have wanted. For the names, I didn't use my plants. I used a Regency name generator. Then I was going to use the longer leaves on my Crestula um, to do character motivation. So I bent the leaf back and whichever card it hit was going to, um, when I released it, was going to be the motive for character one, two, three, and four. So for the character goals and relationships, since it was from an RPG, I used the cards that came with the kit and had my zebra plant cut the cards and then I used the air plant, my little air plant, and kind of spun it around like a like spin the bottle um, to pick a deck with the character motivation. Alright, so wherever the leaf ends up, that's gonna be pile one. Alright, so we got this pile. We got this pile. And this pile. Ta-da! The air plant is going to choose. It has chosen. I wanted to stick with four characters because it's a short story and the word limit was like 2,000 words. Um, so I figured if I had more cards as my main characters, I feel like if I had less characters, I wasn't gonna have a lot to like work with character-wise for the short story. But if I had more than four, I, I felt like it was gonna be too much and I was gonna have too many ideas because that's always my problem. It's like too many ideas and not enough time to do it. So um, yeah, so I went with four characters. Um, Then after I did that, I had to figure out the setting. So I used two main set pieces, or I used like two main settings um, since I only had 1,000 to 2,000 words. So I didn't have a lot of time and space to really use more than that. What I ended up doing was I wrote it in, I wrote it in diary excerpts and like letters style and kind of composited the, the story that way. So that way it would all, um, was cohesive and I could get through backstory really easily by like having somebody like kind of rant about their living situation in their diary entry or whatever. And so that's how I wanted to do that because I, I figured because Jane Austen is so introspective that having diary entries included and letter writing was actually probably the part was was actually one of the most perfect ways I could think to do a short story because then I could get through everything really quickly and get to like the meat and potatoes of the story without having to be all flowery with the setting and blah 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 and there you go. Then I decided on the act slash plot point structure by counting the top leaves of my Echia Vera plant. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten point structure. So Echia Vera's are weird this way um, and if you get into plant tube you'll understand that since the original one I had named it Donna after the Doctor Who companion and so a little bit of mold got on the stem so I had to cut rosette and like get some of the leaves off the rosette so I could um, propagate it and named the propagated plant with the rosette uh, Dr. Donna and then I ended up propagating the leaves as well so technically I was down one plant but then I gained 10 plants so yeah, that's how uh, that happened. So, so anyway, so Dr. Donna helped me decide what the plot was going to be. So oh, the top leaves were 10. So I was going to use like try to do like 10 scenes or 10 plot points total. But since this is a short story contest, uh, I figured I'll just like kind of keep writing until I hit the word limit and then figure it out from there. So while I was writing, I tried to borrow the narrative structure from Love and Friendship, which was um, Jane Austen's story that's told entirely through letters. I think it's called epistolary novel. I've only ever seen this word written, so I have no idea if I'm saying that right. I feel like Love and, Love and Friendship is one of her more underappreciated books. Um, and it, it's so funny because it's so silly. A lot of Love and Friendship is kind of like making fun of the conventions of the time and the tropes of the time and the position women were always in and how female friendship was treated. Because it's really just like two women like going back and forth in letters gossiping about their lives. And so I wanted to use this short story as a way to mimic and sort of poke fun at the way women were simultaneously given all the responsibilities and none of the freedoms at this time. So my short story ended up being called My Dear Portia because that's how I start everything out. So I ended up adding the Dowager character as like someone's grandmother to kind of have an inciting incident and kind of start right off the bat. 
So the different characters, the Dowager's name is Lady Donahue. So you have Portia Hawk, who's kind of like the main main character. It's mainly told, told through her diary entries. And then you have her cousin, who is tasked kind of with, she's the social light of the family. So she's kind of tasked with uh, saving the family because Portia's father and Beatrix's uncle has been philandering around and he has been spending a lot of the family's money so they don't have a lot in reserves. And so either Portia becomes a governess or Beatrix has to marry or become a governess. And so those are the stakes for them. Unbeknownst to Portia, Beatrix has already kind of had a fling with the new guy in town, Maximilian. Beatrix already knows this guy. Uh, Maximilian is the nephew, grand nephew, whatever, um, is the nephew of Lady Donahue, who originally writes to Portia and is like, oh, can you show my son around the country? Blah, 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 blah. And so Maximilian writes to Beatrix and he's like, I gotta have you back. Little do any of the other characters know that Beatrix is actually um, has a secret engagement with Edward Steer, who's like a longtime family friend and she used to pay him no mind. And so that is the premise of the Jane Austen short story that I started. I'm very excited. I hope I get to like read a little bit of it to you guys at some point in the future. Um, so stay tuned. Thank you for watching my channel. If you enjoyed this video, please uh, hit subscribe. And of course, happy writing.